The LA Clippers have lost three straight games, and to make matters worse, Mason Plumlee is expected to be out at least two months with his MCL injury. How will that impact the Clippers, and what can they do to get by for the foreseeable future without their backup center? Going to be talking about it all on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers. Your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darren Vaziri, born and raised in L.A. and in my 19th season as a Clipper fan. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more L.A. Clipper and L.A. sports content. And Locked On Clippers free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, where I want you to hit the notification bell. And let me know what you think the best approach to going, what you think the best approach is going forward to the Mason Plumley injury, because it was announced by Sham Sharania on Twitter today that Clippers center Mason Plumley is expected to be sidelined as much as two months with MCL sprain in knee. Now, before we get to what other thing he said. In that video and the Dallas game, we got to talk about what that does. One of the biggest reasons before the trade that I was very excited about this Clipper team just looking different this season relative to last is because Mason Plumley was with the Clippers to start the season. Last season at the same time, the Clippers had Moses Brown playing backup minutes or they weren't playing with a backup center at all. So when Zubats would go out of the game, because remember, Zubats at the beginning of last season was our best player alongside Paul George. No, I mean, yeah, alongside Paul George, but you could argue in the first 20 to 30 games, he was right there with a case for number one, the way he was holding down the defense. Our defensive rating was good for a large majority because of Zubats. But when he went out of the game, we really struggled. You bring in Mason Plumlee, and despite the fact that I don't think Plumlee's better than Zoo, although this season you can argue that he's been better. But last season, from everything I saw and everything I know about these two players, and that Zoo is was ascending and Plumlee is on the decline, I still thought Zoo was better, mainly because of his defense, his rim protection. But Zoo hasn't been playing great. Mason Plumlee's been playing pretty well. The injury looked pretty bad. The point is... What the Clippers were was more equipped to tackle this regular season with two centers to start the year, two solid centers to start the year. And now, Mason, who already isn't a great rim protector and defender down low, or defender by any means, he still sighs for us, though. Now you take him out of the equation when we traded all our bigger forwards, we're in trouble. We are in real trouble. Because now... When Zubats comes out of the game, our options are you're either playing Musa at the five, who's still too raw, and I still don't think he's big enough, strong enough to defend the rim as the five. I think weak side help and just well-timed help, I think he could be great. And sliding his feet on the perimeter, guarding one through five, that's where Musa, I think, can excel already. But I don't think he can anchor your defense as a five right now. He still isn't strong enough, in my opinion. And offensively, he doesn't have much touch around the basket from everything we've seen in summer league at the NBA level. And he can't shoot the ball, hasn't shown us any of that at least. So his spot, you know, playing him becomes hard when you have championship aspirations. Now, P.J. Tucker at the five, that also has huge issues because P.J. Tucker just looks past it. He can't really get off the ground as good of a defender as he once was, and still, he's a decent defender still. He's nowhere near the defender that he once was. Shooting the ball. Doesn't look like he gets much elevation on that three-pointer in the corner at all anymore. 
He really offers nothing offensively except for offensive rebounds, which, of course, you can always use some more offensive rebounds. But I just don't think that P.J. Tucker brings enough to the table at this moment in time. However, expect Ty Lue to use him as a small ball five for the coming weeks unless the Clippers pick somebody else up. Going to be talking about who they can pick up coming up, but we're not there yet. <laughs> the point is, P.J. Tucker at the five, not liking that. What are your other options besides that? Maybe Kobe Brown at the five, Kawhi Leonard at the five. I mean, listen to what I'm saying. This is going to be rough. Zubats is going to probably have to play 34 plus minutes a game. I'm thinking around the 34, 35, 36 range every game. And that's right now not sounding like the best thing because of the way he's been playing. Not confidently, not catching the ball. Not finishing strong, getting blocked all the time, getting stripped all the time, making bad reads, not looking like he's had the same defensive impact as last season. Doesn't have as much explosion. So hopefully Zoo can come good, and I do trust that he will. I still think Harden, even though Zoo is not a great lob threat at all, I still think Harden can improve his game. I really do. Then it all depends how much we're using Harden and pick and roll. And that gets back to the conversation of the offense and the way it looks at this moment in time. But Mason Plumley, man, it's a huge loss. So get well soon, Mason. Really, really tough. Because the Clippers, they really got to make a move because whether it's a trade, maybe consolidate the guards, or you pick up somebody in free agency. But there aren't that many great options. There aren't that many great options. And the Clippers, they have championship aspirations. And one thing that's interesting about this Clipper team now that they've gotten James Harden is it's gone from we're going to take the regular season seriously, every game counts, to now, oh, we're just figuring it out again. It's going to take time. So it's totally changed. The com- the vibe, the way the team is talking has totally changed And the team has changed, so it's normal and it's expected. But yeah, who should the Clippers look forward to or look towards picking up? Going to be talking about that coming up. I got to tell you a little something about Jace Medical. We spend a lot of time talking together, you and I. We get fired up together on wins and losses who starts, and who sits. I'm thankful for that connection we have, and today I want our chat to be a little more personal. I just learned that you can get a one-year supply on ED medications. You realize what that means? Bring on extended travel. Bring on the next natural disaster. You never know we can have an earthquake here in Southern California. You are covered, my friend. You don't have to worry about whether or not you can refill your generics for Cialis, Viagra, or Avadio prescription. And this is possible because of our friends at Jace Medical. Go online right now at chasemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use promo code LOCKEDON at checkout for a discount as well. A verified customer had this to say about Jace. I'm thankful for this little service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half to have it. I ordered most of my daily meds with a year supply. I also ordered antibiotic kit. I feel secure now. Prices are lower than local pharmacies. I highly recommend this for everyone. If you or someone you love would get some peace of mind by having a year's supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember to use promo code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. All right. So before we get into which centers the Clippers should look at and which one was rumored by Sham Sharani to be in the Clippers' sights, potentially... We got to talk about why this is such a big deal schematically. So, if it's a Zubats, solid drop coverage defender, right? It really is dictated our defense in the starting lineup on how good our point of attack defense is. If the guy that's guarding the ball and navigating the screen can be on the defender's hip, be in his rear view, make a difference in the shot where Zoo doesn't have to guard two people at once and can kind of just show a bit and stay home at the same time, then the Clippers look like a solid defensive team in the starting lineup. Now, the issue has become that James Harden replacing Robert Covington, that doesn't necessarily make our starting lineup better. 
And then when you go to the bench, you have a good amount of negative defenders, even when Mason Plumley was healthy, playing for you. You got Bones Highland, you got Norman Powell, you got Mason Plumley. PJ Tucker's solid. He's not what he used to be. Terrence Mann is really the only positive defender. I guess you could say PJ Tucker as well. But the other guys, they're average at best. Average at best. So having those guys out there on the court together, you're already pretty weak guarding the ball and on the glass. And that really what it, it's it mainly comes down to your resistance from getting guys preventing guys from being too getting two feet in the paint and then contesting and changing their shots when they get to the rim and then of course securing the rebound to end possessions all of which become tougher when you don't have good defenders on the team you have multiple negative defenders in the same lineup which the clippers have and now you're taking away Mason Plumley so you're going even smaller with less resistance you're going to see a lot of small ball and what is small ball's best rim protection staying in front of the ball with a bunch of guys that can move their feet. Unfortunately, the Clippers don't have that many great one-on-one defenders. And Nico Batum, you know, he's a solid one-on-one defender. Robert Covington, not the best anymore, but against bigger guys, as your, you know, your Victor Wembanyamas of the world, as we saw him do, he can hang. And then they're both very good help defenders, especially Rocco. So you just had a just better defensive personnel. Now you're thinner at the forward spot. So as you've seen in these last two games, the Clippers in the second half, their point of attack defense has gotten worse, gotten more tired, mainly with the starters. Their second effort has been very poor. And they just haven't looked better as the game has progressed. And a lot of that has been securing rebounds and the effort. And the fact of the matter is the Clippers are an older team. They are. So let's talk about who was rumored to come to the Clippers. Daniel Tice from the Indiana Pacers, formerly of the Boston Celtics. Now, I got a chance to watch Daniel Tice a lot in when I was in Massachusetts for three years, going to college. And he was a very solid role player for the Celtics. Underrated athlete, solid defender. He is an undersized center, but he could pick and pop. And he set some really solid screens and sealed nicely to prevent whoever he was guarding to block Jason Tatum going to the basket off the screen. He was a master at it, sealing his defender and not allowing him to chase over the screen. It was great. But Daniel Tice returned to Boston, and he wasn't the same player. He had looked past it, and that was the last that I saw of Daniel Tice. I believe that was the 2021 season, and he was on the team. Yeah, he was on the 2022 Celtics as well oh no he was on the Chicago Bulls in 2021 and he started the season on the Houston Rockets then he went back to the Celtics in 2022 when they made their finals run so when they made their finals run I don't think Daniel Tice was that great anymore and then last season he only played seven games so I mean he's pretty washed in my opinion but at this point We just need a body just for a little bit until Mason comes back. Now, none of those bodies are going to be a great choice, unfortunately. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. I don't think it's going to be a a big trade or anything. If the Clippers go out and get someone, I think it's going to be off the waiver wire, straight up, out of free agency, because they just made a trade. I mean, who are you trading from this team? Unless you're consolidating one of the guards by trading Norman Powell or Bones Highland, but I think they'd give it a couple more games before they made a move like that. They know, and they should know, because they can't just do P.J. Tucker at the five. That's going to be food for other teams. They know they can't rock with this for two months. They cannot have no Mason Plumlee and just running P.J. Tucker at the five and running Zoo to the ground. It just it can't work. So we got to go get someone. Daniel Tice, it's not like I'm opposed to giving him a chance, but I think he's washed. The last I saw of him, he looked washed. He wasn't even playing for the Pacers this season, and then he checked in on Thursday night. But other options. Let me just suggest or talk about some of the ones that have been suggested for me by the Locked On listeners, by you. People keep saying Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard has not looked the same since that bubble run. 
He came back to the Lakers in 2022, and he did not look the same. He wasn't as athletic, just a worse version of himself, and wasn't making that positive impact that you once saw from him in 2020. I'll read you the numbers. The last time he played in the NBA, he averaged 16 minutes a game, 6 points, 6 boards. He did shoot 61%, so his stats actually don't even look that bad. But you just couldn't feel his impact the same way. He averaged 0.6 blocks a game. Whereas he still averaged a full one block a game in 2020. And that's what you really have him out there for. His shot blocking, his rim protection. I think Dwight Howard's washed. So I wouldn't really pick him up. Another name that people are throwing out there. DeMarcus Cousins. Guys, we've done it before with Boogie. I thought he was very solid in the minutes that he was asked to play in the regular season. In the playoffs... I mean, Chris Paul cooked him in the pick and roll. And right now, I don't think Boogie's, you know, he hasn't gotten any younger. Love Boogie, but that's not the answer. Then there's Kai Jones that people keep talking about. Kai Jones, of course, would be a sophomore. I'm sorry, a third-year player. Last season, he played in 46 games, averaged three points and three rebounds. He looked good in the summer league. And, of course, was waived by the Charlotte Hornets because he was just wilding on social media. Just posting a whole lot of weird things and even tweeted that basically he had people convinced that he was on some kind of drugs. That he wasn't well mentally. He was posting videos, making weird faces and doing things that didn't seem like they were from a sane person. Not that he was doing anything bad. Just he didn't look okay. He looked like he was on some drugs. But who knows? Maybe he was just very drunk. I don't even know. I don't want to judge the guy. The point is, he when he tweeted, I want to be traded, the, the Hornets were like, all right, we're done with this guy. And so Kai Jones, he is now a free agent. I've seen Clipper fans on Twitter try to talk about getting him and bringing him on board. I don't know. I don't know. I, I At some point, I don't think the Clippers need to just be this – give these guys a second chance and hope they find a home kind of team. Like, we need some guys that are a little bit more reliable. Now, one option I think we should really consider, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the last episode or not, Wenyan Gabriel. Wenyan Gabriel, we had him on a 10-day in 2022. He played six games for the Clips, two points, two rebounds. He played the last two seasons with the Lakers. Or should I say season and a half? Last season, he played 68 games. Averaged 15 minutes, shot 60%, scored five and a half points, and got four rebounds. Let's see his per 36. It'll be interesting to see a per 36 with a guy that averages that. It would be a double-double. 13 points, 10 rebounds. So, Wenyan Gabriel, he's very active. He'll finish around the basket here and there. He'll rebound. He'll play hard. I think he's a guy to get. The Celtics waived him, so why not pick him up? I think he'd be the answer. Bring him back. Wenyan Gabriel, you heard it here first. Or maybe not here first. But coming up, going to look towards the Dallas game. Can the Clippers get their first win with James Harden? What is going to be the key? Or what are going to be the keys? Going to be talking about it all coming up. I got to tell you a little something about prize picks. Prize picks is the best and the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Where the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports is just you against the numbers. With basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League. A league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. For example, you can go with, let's go Paul George plus Cooper Cup. At a combo of seven and a half three pointers made plus receptions. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in place even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. Go to prizepicks.com slash LockedOnNBA and use code LockedOnNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. 
That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. All right. So let's look at the Dallas Mavericks game. First time seeing those guys this season, and we know how it goes when the Clippers play the Dallas Mavericks. It usually is an entertaining game with both teams playing hard. And I don't want to say tempers flaring, but at times, tempers can be flaring. I mean, it's only natural when you play the same team two years in a row in the playoffs. You know, a lot of the, I don't want to say bad blood, but a lot of the scuffles had Marcus Morris, Terrence Mann, Luka Doncic involved. It's always Luka, of course. But it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. Of course, the Mavericks had a really good start to the season. Currently, they're second in the Western Conference. Obviously, it's very early. They're second in the Western Conference at 6 and 2. They just lost to the Dallas Ma- I'm sorry, to the Toronto Raptors on Wednesday by 11 points at home. So let's see if the Clippers can make it two straight home losses for them. Their only other loss came to the Denver Nuggets in Denver, so no shame there. They have been really strong, and of course, it's Luka Doncic leading the charge, who has been just like last season, the beginning of last season, putting his name in the early, very, very early MVP race. It's going to be a tough game. Who is going to guard Luka to start the game as primary defender? Probably Paul George, I would think. Or Kawhi, switch each possession. Listen, if he has Westbrook and James Harden on him, I would love to see how those possessions go. Now, he can't bully James Harden, so you never know. Maybe Harden can stay in front. We'll see. Maybe Luka will have a harder time with this personnel in, switch every, in a switch everything scheme to score on. But the thing is, Luka cooks Zoo and drop coverage usually. Cooks him. It's going to be a tough game. And then you have Kyrie Irving now. He got a win in his first game as a Mav. He came to the Staples Center and got a W against us. So it's going to be a difficult game. Grant Williams has been hitting the three ball. Has been playing well. Has been a good addition for them. Derek Lively... Their rookie has really been a spark plug for him. A lob threat, really athletic big. But I'm not sure if he's going to play. I heard he was injured. He played against the Charlotte Hornets. Did he play against the Toronto Raptors? He did not. So we'll see if Derek Lively plays. But if he doesn't, definitely gives the Clippers a better chance. What do I want to see from the Clippers? Definitely Kawhi being more aggressive and the team looking to get him the ball more. Also, I would like to see more effort in the second half defensively and on the glass. You know, more of a focus on that end. And I'd like to see, honestly, James Harden with more pick and rolls and having the ball in his hands a little more. And also, from Ty Lue, two of the big four need to be in at all times. Mainly, one of Russ or Harden should be in at all times. Besides that... I would say no three-guard lineups with Bones, Norm, and either Russ or Harden, but we really don't have much of a choice. I don't know where he would go otherwise. Maybe playing Amir Coffey instead of Bones? Let's see. I feel like Bones has already been, you know, before the season even started, they told him, like, you're going to play a role for this team, and until they adjust things, I think he has that role still, which means he's going to play off the bench, and we're probably going to have a small ball lineup and a small lineup in the backcourt. How the Mavericks will take advantage of that will remain to be seen. But who knows? It could get ugly. It's hard for me to be confident when we have these kinds of holes. And now with Mason Plumlee out, it exacerbated them. But you just hope that maybe this is that first game where the offense really comes together. The shots finally start to fall. You start to feel like they're getting a little bit of a rhythm. The guys aren't deferring so much. Westbrook calms down just a bit in terms of looking for a shot. And things just happen naturally. Maybe get stops, get some easier baskets in transition. We'll see. But that get stops and get rebounds part, that's going to be the tough part. It'll be tough. Can the Clippers get 
the win, the first win with James Harden, break the three-game losing streak. Four-game losing streak would not be pretty, especially in this really tough West, and every game is going to get bigger as the season progresses, and the schedule will only get tougher. Let me know what you think, though. What is your solution to Mason Plumlee being out? Who do you think the Clippers should pick up? Or maybe they shouldn't pick anybody up. What should they do? Let me know in the comments. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for even more LA Clipper content. And Locked on, Clipper, Locked on Clippers, free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure you comment at the notification bell so you know every single time we post a video. The age-old proverb continues. Go Clippers. Let's get this W.